Hey guys, Ryan from Spiker Workshop. I'm doing a really quick video on how to install the Blizzard suspension lockers. So there's these printed parts here that the, the stock Blizzard basically has really weak suspension and it really affects the performance with the snowblower on it. So these things make it rigid so it can handle a lot more weight. Put a lot bigger battery on the top using our battery boxes we sell. This modification is actually permanent, so if you don't want to lose the suspension, you might look for some other way to do this. But basically I'm going to unscrew the wheel. So with the wheel removed, this is the spring device here. So we need to get these cut off so we can get this out. You can actually just take this and pull it out with a little bit of force, and it will kind of bend the springs. And then I'm going to take a Dremel and cut these off. So you can see I cut them flush. Take the locker and there's a right and left. You want to uh, remember where the suspension arm was going. But they, they slide in there like that. Put that back on. And then there's a washer and screw. So you can screw directly in that hole even with the spring in there. So it should look like that once you get the screw. And then I'll just put the wheel back together. Make sure to put the spacer in there. Once you get the wheel attached, it should spin freely. Don't tighten it too much. And then you can see I did it with all the others. Uh, it's up to you if you want to do just the front and back and leave the center. Uh, but it includes six, so you can lock all of it if you want. I have a video instruction on how to put together our new transmissions for the Kyosho Blizzard. And this should work on the 2.0, the SR, and the FR. And you can see it uses a worm gear and a lot of the same existing hardware that's already in there. The benefit is you can step up to 540, 550 size motors. The original motors that come with it are extremely crappy. They have always had problems. So the first thing you should do is start taking apart some of the hardware that's in your Kyosho Blizzard. It should be stripped down basically to look like this, so there's nothing on the inside. Uh, this can stay together because we're going to reuse it just like that. So there will also be a, a printed instruction guide that will come with this too. And on there will be a drill guide. So you'll want to drill out the holes. A lot of my products are like that where you have to enlarge the holes. And then there's a little thing here is that I've ordered a lot of these gears for the new snowblower. They're all 6 millimeter diameter, but the Blizzard uses a 5 millimeter shaft. So as a workaround, instead of ordering these all in 5 millimeter also, um, it will come with this little tube. And this can be pushed in here. It might take a little bit of force, um, but get that in there flush, and then that basically turns it into a 5 millimeter. So this part that comes in the comes off of the Blizzard, it will have these bushings in there. You can pop these out, so remove those, and then in place of them, put the bearings that are included with the kit and on both sides here. So to put it in the uh, frame here, we'll put this back through here like this. And then before we get it all the way on, uh, two things are, there's a printed spacer. So I'm gonna get that on here. And then also the worm gear will go on there too. And then I'll use two screws that were in here originally. Before you screw it on, you'll want to get that the uh, stock chain out here to go around here. There's actually an adjustment you can do here. So if you loosen this bolt just a little bit, they actually have a built-in idler adjustment. You can see I can move that a little bit. So wait till you get this screwed on and then I'll make the belt uh, or the chain tight using that. So once you have that, then I'm going to put the two set screws in the worm gear. When it's all tight, it should be really easy uh, free spinning. If it's a little too tight, you might have had this too tight. So just readjust that. So next we need to prepare all the drivetrain components for the worm and the motor. So I may or may not sell motors with the kit, um, just check the website to see. I would recommend a 35 turn because you want more torque 
Um, my initial test with this is with a 35 turn, it's a little bit slower than it was stock, but I think it was a little too fast stock anyways. We need to use a Dremel and create uh, two flat spots on it. There will be a diagram that shows where to put the two flat spots, um, but for now I'll just go ahead and show you here. So the way it will assemble is very similar to my snowblower. So that will be flush like this here. Uh, either mark this or just eyeball where that was at and then put a little flat spot here with the Dremel So you can see I did just a little bit right there the Longer you make it the more adjustment you have once you get it on there You will put the bearings in the printed part here on both sides So a washer goes on there first then the worm faces this way like that and then the tricky part is you got to feed another washer in on the back side so one way to do it is holding it upright uh, you might need to use like a knife or something it should stick out just a little bit on one end and then I tighten down both set screws there the coupler that comes with this I was not able to really find any six millimeter to one eighth inch but I could find six to three millimeter so you actually have to drill out the coupler with the eighth inch drill. And it's pretty easy to do because it's so close already. It just needs a little bit. So then, same as we did here, you're going to have to use the Dremel and make a flat spot. And you can test the fit by putting it on the motor first. And then seeing about where it lines up. So see, I actually have a gap here. You don't want that, so I think I can push it on a little bit more. So you can see I did a flat spot there. Then I'm going to tighten this on the motor. Don't go too tight because these couplers don't have that much threads on them. Just kind of snug it up. So before I tighten that down, you'll want to put on the motor screws. So two screws with two washers go in there. Um, and try to line up the holes like that. So here you can see I got the motor screwed on and then I finished tightening the set screws and it should spin pretty easily. There shouldn't really be any tension. So then using three screws we're gonna connect it to the wall here. The screw that's right here, the, the front one, make sure to put a washer on it otherwise it gets a little too close to the worm gear. I recommend using some kind of thick grease. I'm just going to use some marine grease that I have on hand here. So this uh, this piece will be screwed on here. And then you can set up the servo, just like shown here. It's just those four screws. And then um, with the radio, I actually have it turned on right now. Um, you want to adjust the throw so it's like that. When it's centered, the joystick, you can center the... Uh, servo So then I'll screw that down So here you can see I got the adjustments all set up So you can adjust the length of this What position it is on here and then also the length of the other rod to get it to work right when you have it all dialed in It should be able to lift the blower up off the ground And then also on the, all the way down it should lift up the front end just a little so there's like some some weight on the snowblower and you can see this mount here um, is pretty strong because all the forces are going this way so it doesn't even flex or anything when it's lifting it up and this is the the standard servo that came with the blizzard because of this two-way linkage um, a standard a uh, fairly weak servo can lift the my new blower up. I believe the new blower is uh, almost six pounds, so that's it's pretty good. Uh, quickly go over the electronics setup. I'm using uh, 35 turn motors, the 540 size. I think you can use up to 550 because there's uh, plenty of room back here. And then currently I'm running on the stock speed controllers that came with the blizzard they're um 
a little bit underrated, but I've I found that they they seem to work okay. They do get warm, um, but the the motor is not under that much current because of the worm gear. So you could try to uh, reuse those. Otherwise, if you're not having good luck with them, I'd recommend getting some of these uh, Hobby Wing 1060 speed controllers. I use these in a lot of stuff and really like these. There's still enough space in between the two motors to fit uh, battery packs. You can either do this way or stand them vertically. I did change the radio, so if this is like your first time using the Blizzard, you definitely need a better radio. These I've been using on pretty much everything I own for RC. They're 50, 60 bucks on Amazon. They actually have a version that is 10 channels. So this is the um, FSI6. They have an FSI6X. This I6X one I'm using in the Traxxas TRX4. And then on this version I'm running my new 1X2 snowblower. That's kind of the whole point of this transmission upgrade is the factory stuff can't handle all this extra weight. I'm actually running two separate batteries with this. Two drive motors are running on 7.2 volts. I have a separate speed controller that's running actually on 24 volts to this uh, brushless motor here. And the way you can fit all this in here is with my battery box upgrade. So here's a quick layout of the channels. For this whole setup you only need the 6 channel radio because it has um, everything you need for this. So the speed controller for the snowblower, the spout, uh, this up and down, and then the chute channel 4 right and left here. And then the two drive motors and then the lifting servo. This radio can be mixed to do tank steering on one channel. If you go into mix, I'll just show you my settings. So mix number one is that. Mix number two is basically negative. And then I believe that's all you need and that's on channel one and three. Channels might be different depending on which stick you like to use. There's plenty of space behind the motors here to put all the wiring and stuff. There's even plenty of space for a big speed controller like this. I did have to put on longer wires though to reach out to the motor. And then I also cut a notch uh, in the back so the wires can stick out. So here I also cut a notch for the power wire to come out. And then up into, we sell these battery boxes look like a generator and it's a simple way to add battery runtime and counterweight so when you lift up the snowblower normally the machine will just kind of do this um, so you need some weight uh, to get the front the blower to lift up basically so in here you can fit you can fit those standard uh, 12 volt uh, 12 amp hour batteries and these add like a ton of weight to it which is good for bringing up the the front but currently in here I got uh, four lipos two of them I didn't connect and then the other two are wired in series with a connector that comes out the bottom here so you can do quite a few different things you can even fit six of these in here too if you wanted so you could do uh, two in series and then three parallel sets to get you could get 15,000 milliamps at 24 volts in this box So that's a lot of runtime and then to show you the transmission actually running around here 